Hi friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. If you have ever seen one of these and wondered what in the world are they, then this video is for you. We're gonna be talking about the differences between oxygen absorbers and silica gel packs, otherwise known as desiccant packs. What are they? What are they used for? How do I know when to use which one? And the number one safety thing you need to keep in mind when using either one. Let's get started. By the way, if you would like help building your food storage, scroll down to the description box of this video and click this link for our free one year food storage plan. We calculated a year supply of food for one person, then broke that data down into a week by week list of items to build your pantry on a budget. We'll send it straight to your inbox. If you're new here, we invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss all of our upcoming food preservation, pantry storage, and gardening tutorials. Now back to the kitchen. First, let's discuss the differences between the two. Uh, oxygen absorbers are self-explanatory. They absorb oxygen. They are little packets with iron powder inside and that iron mixes with um, oxygen and a chemical reaction occurs where it is sucks the oxygen inside of itself. So it, thereby removing the oxygen from the environment of whatever, whatever it's placed in. Uh, silica gel packs or desiccants as they're known are silica gel and they absorb, absorb moisture. So whenever you are looking at a food storage item, both of them are used to make your food last longer. And sometimes you need to decide when to use which one. And to make that right decision, you need to look at your food item and say, is it more important for it to be in an oxygen free environment? Or is it more important to protect against moisture? And that's the number one question you need to ask yourself when choosing either one. So now let's talk about oxygen absorbers in more detail. Uh, the number one thing, I wanna start with the safety first, um, and that is to never use an oxygen absorber with a high moisture product. This would be like, uh, let's see, dried prunes, like your dehydrated fruits that stay super, super sticky um, and are just really high moisture. Uh, brown sugar is another one, even though it doesn't seem very uh, moist. It is, in fact, more than 10% moisture, and that 10% moisture is kind of the level of safety where if it's below 10% moisture, it is safe to use an oxygen absorber. But unless you have a meter, you have no way of knowing where that boundary line is as far as percentages go. So just know that it's mostly your, your sticky fruits where even though they're dried, they still stay kind of sticky. My prunes are coming to mind because my children just ate those recently and uh, they make their fingers really sticky. Um, but brown sugar is another one as well. And you do not want to use an oxygen absorber with that because when you have moisture with no oxygen, that is breeding grounds for botulism. And I am personally of the belief that botulism is nowhere near as common or as scary or as well, just common as uh, the powers that be kind of make us think that, that it is. But at the same time, if there is a safety measure that I can take to eliminate that worry from my mind, I'm going to do that because I just don't want my food stores to turn into a stress point. Um, so even though I might have some different beliefs as far as botulism are, is concerned, I still abide by that safety standard because then I just don't have to worry about it. So oxygen absorbers is a no-no for high moisture items like brown sugar and dried fruits where they stay really moist. So now that we've got the safety thing out of the way, let's talk about sizes. Oxygen absorbers come in different sizes and they're measured in cc's which stands for cubic centimeters. And the size packet that you need is going to determine, be determined by the size of container that you're using, but also the type of food that you're using. Now, if you wanted to get super detailed about it, this could get confusing, but you don't need to um, overwhelm yourself with it. Just the general rule of thumb, I wrote it down here because I don't want to tell you wrong. The general rule of thumb is that, oh, where is it? Took notes here. Took notes here for you. Okay, the general rule of thumb is that a quart jar needs 100 cc's. One of the reasons why I have to take notes is because I don't purchase oxygen absorbers and use them regularly because there are free ways of removing oxygen from a container using a vacuum sealer or my brake bleeder pump where you are purchasing that brake bleeder pump one time for $20 and you can always um, take out the moisture out of a jar, or excuse me, take out the oxygen out of a jar without having to continuously buy absorbers. I do keep absorbers on hand for freeze-dried food in mylar bags. That is probably 
that is at least in my household that is the number one use and almost the only use case for oxygen absorbers is for freeze-dried food or dried food in a mylar bag for extremely long-term storage where well, we are talking 10 15 20 years but honestly we don't do much of that in our house because we are constantly rotating through our food supply but the cc measurement is basically how much power it has to absorb oxygen within its container if you have a big container you need a higher cc oxygen packet or you can also put in multiple packets to get your total cc that you need so for instance a five gallon bucket needs 2000 cc's of oxygen absorbers to sufficiently pull the oxygen out of that five gallon bucket uh, 1,000 cc's is a somewhat common packet, so you could put, you could purchase the 1,000 cc's and put two of those inside a five gallon bucket to reach a 2,000 cc. Another example is that a quart jar needs 100 cc and a half gallon bag, which is a lot of your mylar bags are half gallons. They need 200 cc's. So even though the mylar bags need 200 cc's, I only purchase 100 cc's because then I can use them for both my quart jars, which need 100, and I can put two inside of the mylar bags, a half gallon mylar bag because they need 200 cc's. So you can always go higher than the minimum amount needed to pull oxygen out of that container, but you don't want to go lower. And you can add multiple packets of a smaller cc size to, um, to reach the minimum CC that you need for that package. I'm like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all these CC stocks <laughs> I'm getting lost in my head. Um, but I hope, I hope that was clear to you. So for, let me just read you, read you off this chart of this notes that I took this morning. One gallon container would be a 400 CC oxygen packet. A half gallon container, which would be those half gallon mason jars or your standard size mylar bag is gonna need 200 CCs. A quart jar or a quart mylar bag would be 100 cc's. A five gallon bucket, 2,000 cc's. Another tip that you need to know about oxygen absorbers is that once you, well, let me back up. They come in individually sealed packets of either five or 10. Every now and then you will find a seller like on Amazon where it's a packet of 100 and they're all just in one big bag. You do not want to purchase that because you once you open a package you need to use that oxygen absorber immediately and then reseal the package somehow or it's going to get ruined it's going to that's going to activate it's going to pull oxygen from the air as much as it can and then it's not going to be able to work anymore and it's just going to die and deactivate and no longer be useful so you want to purchase from a company who packages them individually in packets of like three or five or ten so that you can get out only as much as you need to package up whatever you're working on and then either only have to use that much or reseal the bag when you're done. There are usually little indicators. See this little pink circle right here? A pink circle, most of the companies that I have bought from have been pink. Every now and then, I think one time I saw a blue one, but when it's pink, that means it is not ex it's not exposed to oxygen at the moment. This is in a sealed bag. These are not exposed to oxygen, meaning they are preserved, they're not activating, so they are safe and still able to be used whenever I go to open it. If I were to cut open this bag within about a minute or two, this little indicator would turn gray. And if for whatever reason I got this out of my storage and I saw that this little circle was gray, I would know that unfortunately these oxygen absorbers are no longer active and they're not going to do the job for me and I would just have to toss it out. Now let's talk about the silica gel packs or the desiccant packs. Now these aren't used quite as often as oxygen absorbers are, um, but they look very similar. They're just in a packet, a square rect or rectangular type packet. Got little the sil silica little balls in them. And they are used to, like I said, pull moisture out of objects. The only objects, foods. <laughs> the only time I have used desiccant packs is with home dehydrated foods where I was concerned about moisture in the environment getting to them and making them rehydrate to the point of producing mold. Dehydrated foods 
can only handle so much moisture in the environment, even through a closed container, like a plastic container. Moisture can still go through a porous material and get into that container and before it, they will mold. Uh, so my home dehydrated foods, I have put desiccant packs in the past. I have since, when I first started, I did it religiously. I put a packet in every single jar. Um, when I first started dehydrating, it was probably five or six years ago. So I've been doing this for a while. And now that I have, I kind of know what we eat. I know how much we eat. I know what we're working through. I know how long it takes us to work through it. Um, I can, I have realized that if we're going to be eating that jar of dehydrated food within six months, then I don't need to worry about a desiccant pack because as long as I'm storing in glass mason jars, that's another thing. I used to store in Tupperware, plastic Tupperware, and in a pinch I would even put it in a Ziploc bag, but that is a no-go, not recommended. Um, I switched to all mason jars and I have not had an issue since with mold getting into my dehydrated foods. One other uh, way that I use silica packets that I will still use to this day and that is in my home dehydrated ground meats which is primarily venison. Venison is a very lean meat so I'm comfortable dehydrating it even though it's not necessarily recommended to dehydrate ground meat in your home dehydrator. It isn't a freeze dryer but I'm talking about just your regular old you know dehydrator um, but venison is a very lean meat and we work through it within six months or so so i am comfortable doing that in my family and i've been doing it for years because it is meat and therefore has a little bit of fat in it i do put silica packets in those jars to make sure that they don't get any more moisture in them than is already exists inside that jar okay the final tip that I need to share with you, which is extremely important, and I just learned this last year, I had no idea, and that is that you do not store both an oxygen absorber and a desiccant pack in the same container. You can't choose, you can't put both of them in the same container. You have to choose one or the other. The reason why is because oxygen absorbers need a teeny tiny bit of moisture in order to activate. If you put an oxygen absorber, with a desiccant pack or silica gel pack in the same container together, the desiccant pack can pull enough moisture from the environment that the oxygen absorber cannot activate anymore and it can't do its job. So it's not a matter of sickness, it's not a matter of like creating botulism or, or anything like that, it's just that your oxygen absorber will no longer work and in the grand scheme of things I use, I don't use oxygen absorbers a whole lot but I use vacuum sealing which is pulling out that oxygen a whole lot more than I use decus desiccant packs and that's because oxygen is the number one enemy of most foods so if I have to choose between one or the other I'm more than likely going to choose the oxygen absorber and I don't want to add anything into the container that could uh, risk not letting that absorber activate and do its job properly hey y'all I hope that was helpful to you and we will see you next time Bye.